to be unburdened by what has been. Okay? Okay? What's going on, QTube? You guys are tuned into another QPIL reaction. And in this reaction, Barack Obama tries to guilt black men into voting for Kamala Candy Corn Head Ass Harris. Let's get a dose of this shit. <laughs> Now, first, let me just preface this reaction by saying I am a black American man. I like my freedom. I like my liberties and I expect to keep my freedom and my liberties. I don't need handouts. I don't need people to pander to me about what they can do for me specifically. And that's not how I vote. I don't really give a shit about politics if we being honest because I understand that politicians are biased and they're self-centered and it's just about power and money at the end of the day and them trying to say whatever they can say that they believe will lead them to get votes and be in a position of power. They're all about themselves at the end of the day. I understand that as someone who studies human behavior for a living. It's simple psychology. So there's no reason for me to look at a politician giving me a speech about what they can do for me and feel that they wholeheartedly believe that it is about me and they care about my progress and my success as an American. No, just put, get me somebody who keeps my rights, keeps my liberties intact. Don't fuck with my entrepreneurship. Don't fuck with my guns. Don't fuck with my individuality in terms of my freedom to believe whatever I want to believe in a religious sense or my freedom of, of speech and expression. You get somebody in office who protects those rights and I'm good. I don't care about what they say about groups of people, how they feel about other people. I care about the fact that they want to uphold my liberties, my rights. That's all I care about. So I just want to point that out before we dive into this video. Now, Barack Obama is a Democrat. And of course, because he's a Democrat, he's going to vouch for the Democratic candidate, Kamala Harris. He did the same thing when Trump was running against Hillary Clinton. And he even stated that Trump wasn't going to win. He was laughing because he, was, he thought it was a joke. But now that he see that in the election forecast, Kamala Harris is not doing so well, especially among the black male demographic, he thought he could step in and give us a pep talk and inspire us and motivate us, basically guilt trip us into feeling like we have to vote for Kamala simply because we're both black. I don't give a fuck about identity politics. I don't care that we're both black. Like I said, I care about the person who's going to uphold my liberties. I ain't, I'm not voting for the person who I believe can do X, Y, Z for me because I can do X, Y, Z for myself. As long as I have my individual freedom, my sovereignty, my right to expression, free speech, my guns and my entrepreneurship, I'm cool. I'm cool. I don't want anybody in office that's going to interfere with that. And I damn sure don't want someone who has socialist values, communist values or ideologies in office. Let's take a look at the video. Go ahead and, and just say some, speak some truths if you don't mind. Please. Because my understanding, based on reports I'm getting from campaigns and communities, is that... Um, we have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Okay, so he starts off with saying he doesn't see the same amount of support that he seen when he was running. Well, Barack, there's a reason for that. One, you're a man. Number two, you're a great orator. Number three, you're intelligent. You know how to articulate your thoughts. You know how to formulate a coherent thought and then elucidate on your points. All of those things are things that are absent in Kamala Harris cognition. Let's just get that out of the way. She's not a man. She's not intelligent. She doesn't articulate her thoughts well. She's just not appeasing as a candidate. That, that's why. Now, in order to win male votes, you typically have to start off as a man. Especially when we know historically the patriarchy dominates politics. It dominates politics for a reason. And the last person that you're going to convince that a woman should be leading the free world is a community of men 
who are tired of listening to black women tell us what to do, how we should think, how we should behave, and instilling their values in us where it ultimately ends up to our detriment. The fact that he believes that she identifies as black should be a substantial contributor to our motivation in voting for her is erroneous as hell. Absolutely not. Now, I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. So if you don't mind, just for a second, I'm going to speak to y'all directly. And say that when you have a choice that is this clear, when on the one hand you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college with you, understands the struggles and pain and joy that comes from those experiences. Kamala didn't grow up with me. She don't know me. She didn't go to college with me. I went to an R1 top 100 university that was predominantly white and Asian. So she damn sure ain't go to my university. I didn't go to a HBCU. And I wouldn't go to a HBCU. It doesn't have enough academic prestige for me to go to a HBCU. Furthermore, she didn't grow up poor. What does she always say? She grew up in a middle class family. That's her number one talking point. I understand that I grew up in a middle class family. You ask her about climate change. Kamala, what are you going to do about climate change? Well, I grew up in a middle class family, okay? Let's start there. Kamala, what are you going to do for the Democratic Party? What are your policies going to be? What, what's your strategy? What are you going to implement? First off, let's understand, okay? I grew up in a middle class family, okay? So she didn't grow up like me. In that regard, I grew up in a middle class family, but I didn't go to an HBCU. She doesn't know me. She can't identify with me about any struggle. I don't even know why people try to relate over a struggle. I didn't struggle. I had a two-parent household. My parents were married. I didn't struggle. Yeah, every now and then you might have the lights go off or the water go off because the water bill or the electricity bill needs to be paid today and you pay it two hours late so you go an hour or two without water. Yeah, that's about the most you're going to get from me, but I didn't grow up in a poor neighborhood. I went to a decent school. I ain't identifying with no struggle. And that's not why I would want to elect a leader into office who can identify with the struggle. Now, of course, it can be beneficial because they provide a perspective that, you know, other elites didn't have because they didn't grow up in those conditions. They may or may not have grown up in those conditions. And most of the time they haven't grown up in those conditions. So it's understandable that you can provide a level of empathy and relatability to what people from your neighborhood or your neck of the woods may have dealt with in, 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 in their youth. But ultimately... You do know that that's attributable to one personality, their family, the decisions that they make, their priorities and their discipline, not the system. See, as an individual, I understand that your individuality has a more significant impact on your outcomes in life, your personality, your priorities, the discipline, what you want to be, what you value and the time you put into achieving the goals that you want to value. It's up to you to do your own research. It's up to you to figure out what it is that you want to do and how to get there. It's not the government's job to just feed you money and put you in places where you even if you had the money, you still wouldn't know how to accomplish what it is that you ultimately want to accomplish. We're so quick to blame the system, and that's what Obama is trying to play on here. He's trying to play on the system. He's being a politician. He's trying to play on the system. At the end of the day, it boils down to you as an individual. The system is made to protect your individual sovereignty. Therefore, the decisions you de you decide to make as an individual will ultimately have the most significant impact on your life outcomes. Not who you put in office, as long as they're not interfering with your liberties. And I understand that. And that's probably why, even in addition to the fact that Kamala is already a woman incompetent, 
and can't articulate a thought well without a teleprompter, why black men who are intelligent enough to understand exactly what I understand don't want to vote for her and aren't going to vote for her. And Obama just got to get over that shit. Because this right here ain't helping. The last thing that motivates me to want to do something is trying to guilt trip me into doing it. And I didn't have any desire to do it to begin with. Oh, I, oh she definitely ain't getting my vote now. She absolutely is not getting my vote now. Because now you're trying to pull this. Because had to work harder and do more and overcome. and achieves the second highest office in the land and is putting forward concrete proposals to directly address the things that are vital in our neighborhoods and our communities from housing to making sure that our, our, our mothers and our, our fathers and our grandparents can afford medicine and, and making sure that we are dealing with prices that are too high and rents that are too high and, and are committed to, is committed to making sure that we maintain the Affordable Care Act so everybody's got help here and cares about things like education and entrepreneurship in our neighborhoods. And that's all one side. What concrete proposal has Kamala Harris put forward that is vital to our communities that she's going to be effectively able to implement and get it passed through Congress? What concrete proposal is he talking about? I haven't heard one good policy proposal from Kamala Harris that would even sway me in the slightest to consider voting for her. $25,000 for a down payment loan on a house? Absolutely not. She's, she's going to do nothing but exacerbate inflation with that. If she could even get that passed. I don't even think she could get that passed through Congress. The student loan forgiveness, not going to get it passed through Congress. Joe Biden couldn't do it to the extent in which he tried. And he was still trying on his way out. And he still tried up till like last week. And they still shut that shit down. She's going to do more of the same of what he tried to do. And everything that he tried to do, she's going to try to do it. And when it got shut down with him, it's going to get shut down with her too. I haven't seen a single concrete proposal that Kamala Harris has put on the table that she can offer to people who feel like they are disadvantaged or underprivileged that will put them in position to where they feel they can operate optimally and achieve what it is they're trying to achieve in America. Haven't seen it. Haven't heard it. And even if she did have it, Somebody got to ghostwrite that shit. And even reading on the teleprompter, she would still struggle to get it out and explain it in a way to where we can digest it and understand. Because she just isn't good at articulating her thoughts. Not a single one. To be unburdened by what has been. Okay? Okay? That is the most eloquent statement she has in her repertoire. And on the other side, you have someone who has consistently shown disregard, not just for the communities, but for you as a person and on the other side you have someone who has shown disregard for not only communities but you as a person trump has not said or done anything that pisses me off now when he originally got elected people were saying he's going to have black people back in slavery black back in chains didn't happen we thought the economy was going to go to shit didn't happen trump actually did a fair job at his job he did we got to give credit where credit is due. We survived four years of Trump with minimal, minimal complaints, minimal economic strain, and stayed within the bounds of peaceful foreign affairs for the most part. So this vilifying Trump doesn't appeal to me because we've already experienced Trump in office. And what we experienced from Trump in office wasn't the end of the world, wasn't nearly as bad as people who dislike Trump wanted to believe it was going to be simply because they dislike Trump. They are biased against Trump. And as someone who has to remain rational and objective, knowing that the economy was stable under Trump, knowing that he had a pretty good run, he had a pretty good stint in office, why would I feel inclined to be deterred from voting for him again when his opposition is someone as incompetent as Kamala Harris. I just, I just don't. I just don't. She doesn't have the presence, intelligence, or competence to thwart the idea of voting for Trump. Even if I dislike Trump, Kamala isn't competent enough to sway me away from voting for Trump. She just doesn't have that appeal. 
And I can understand if black men don't want to vote for Trump either. I mean, in all honesty, I still don't know if I'm going to vote. But I can understand if black men don't want to vote for Trump because they don't want to vote for Kamala. And they don't want to vote for Trump. So they sit out. So Kamala loses by default because she needs the black male vote in order to win. She just does. She needs the black male vote to secure the spot as president. She ain't going to get it. Because, one, she's a woman. And I wholeheartedly believe that a woman doesn't need to run the country. I don't care how good she is. As long as men exist, men need to run countries because men exist and men are the dominant force on this planet. And we need someone logical, capable, someone who can deter threats, foreign affairs, someone who can negotiate, someone who understands the art, the competition of war, diplomacy. Women don't fit that bill. As long as guys like Kim Jong-un and Putin exist, we need our own wolf to deter the wolves that exist overseas. We need someone who can match their energy, who can level the playing field. Kamala Harris isn't that. They would look at her and laugh in her fucking face. And you're thinking about sitting out? <laughs> but, you know, because of Putin, I think. <laughs> and you're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. I've got a problem with that. He has a problem with that because part of it is him feeling like we aren't feeling a woman as president. I know I'm not, and I have no issue with saying that. I'm not feeling a woman as president. I will reiterate what I just said. One, a woman doesn't need to be president. Men run the world. This is a man's world. And as long as men exist, a woman doesn't need to be president. Not only a woman that doesn't need to be president, but an incompetent woman at that. The most incompetent presidential candidate we have ever had in the history of America. She absolutely does not need to be president because she's a woman and because she's dumb and incompetent. Because, because part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. I'm not. I just admit it. I don't want a woman as president. That's going to be number one. Anytime a woman runs for president, it's going. that's going to be my number one reason I don't vote for the woman is because I simply don't want a woman as president because men exist. That should be a position reserved for men. That was a position created by men for men. Presidents. So it is what it is. He doesn't like it. I don't give a fuck. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. And I think anybody you are talking to in a barber shop, anybody you are talking to in your house, in your family, at a, at a, at church, who is coming with that kind of attitude, I think you have to ask them, well, how can that be? Because the women in our lives have been getting our backs this entire time. They've been raising us and working and having our backs. And when we get in trouble and the system's not working for us, they're the ones who are out there marching and protesting. I love the women in my life. I love my mother. I love my sister, my female cousins, and my grandmother. Love them dearly. Guess what I don't want them to do, and guess what I wouldn't vote for them to do if they were trying to do it? Be president. Regardless of how much support, love, nurture, care they show me, regardless of how often I can call on them, that is a position reserved for men. I don't want a woman in a position of leadership over an entire country when other countries exist, and there are nastier male leaders out there and we still have to be intimidating to those male leaders as well. Only a man can intimidate another man. Only a man can intimidate another man. Only a man can make another man answer to his crimes. Only a man can check another man. That's not the position for a woman. And he tries to use when the system isn't working in our favor, such as what? You mean when, when guys go out and commit crimes, when they make the decision to commit a crime and they get smart with police officers 
they're non-compliant they do everything opposite of what the police officer instructs them to do and then they end up on a t-shirt and black lives matter go out and protest and pretend that black people are above the law and that we don't have to follow rules we don't have to abide by the same standards adhere to the same expectations that the rest of the population the other cultural groups have to adhere to we believe we're above that and when the officers take into account their own life and their own safety and they act in accordance with their self-preservation and they take out a criminal a perpetrator you 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 mean you that's that system nobody tells women to go out and protest justified killings they choose to believe that those killings aren't justified because they want to believe that the system is against us because of bullshit like this that Barack Obama is spewing political bullshit yeah we love the personal women in our lives i'm glad they support us i'm glad they care for us i'm glad they love us appreciate us value us nurture us that still don't mean we want them to be fucking president i know i don't i don't want my mother to be president i don't want my grandmother to be president that's not their position they should be in supportive roles they can be in other positions they can be in congress they can be in the house of representatives they can be judges not the president. No, sir. And so now you're thinking about sitting out or even supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you because you think that's a, a sign of strength because that's what being a man is, putting women down. That's not acceptable. That's not acceptable to him. Why do we run to the aid of women when women feel bad because a man tells them the truth? Just because you hurt a woman's feelings or just because you let a woman know that she's not the shit that society hypes her up to be because they want to fuck her or because she's a woman, you putting her down. The truth puts anybody down when the truth is not what they want to hear. That's why truth is considered the new hate speech. But women aren't exempt from hearing the truth, especially when you're going to be in an authoritative position that is the most powerful position in the fucking world. And you're overseeing 330 million citizens as the leader of the free world in the country that every other country ultimately wants to emulate, wants to strive to be. Let me tell you what men do. Men make their own decisions, evaluations, examinations, assessments of what they feel is the best course of action for their life. The smartest men, they don't conform to the masses. They take a step back and they analyze if what they're evaluating makes sense, if it's optimal if it's effective and they go from there the last thing i'm going to do as a man is be shamed or guilted into me wanting to take a step back and analyze examine evaluate assess a situation that i know is going to be either advantageous or pernicious to the goals that i have set in place for myself you can't get me on the basis of the fact that i'm a black man and Kamala Harris identifies as black. I don't give a shit if she really was black. If she's incompetent and unintelligent and inarticulate, she's the last woman on planet Earth that I would want representing my best interests. She wouldn't be able to represent them adequately. She wouldn't be able to represent them optimally. She wouldn't even be able to elucidate at my level of elucidation. So why would I want her speaking for me? I'm more intelligent and I'm more objective and I understand the way life works. No one can talk me, especially on the basis of my skin complexion, an immutable characteristic that I have no control over that is simply on me because of my ancestors' geographical location on the map. I'm more than just my skin. I have a whole consciousness. I'm a whole being. I have my own thoughts. I have my own values, my own beliefs my own experiences, and they won't always align on the basis of my skin complexion. There's variance in my experiences as a black man in America. 
I haven't been roughed up by the cops. I didn't have to eat spam if I didn't want to. I didn't have to be shot at. I didn't have to gangbang. I didn't have to sell drugs. I didn't have to be a part of degeneracy. Because I come from a family who understood that the family unit was the best bet against being exposed to those things. Or at least minimally exposed to those things. And I adopted those values in that belief system where they're deep, where they're deeply instilled in me to where I can continue that success in my family by starting my own, by not engaging in the degeneracy that our community is known for. So I don't have to identify with that or make that the center of my identity as a black man in America. And I'm not going to. And because I'm not going to, and because I'm educated, and because I'm well-spoken, and because I'm well thought out, I'm going to continue as a man to operate on my individuality as a sovereign individual in America who just wants my rights simply uphold and my liberties not impeded upon. That's what I'm going to do. And what Kamala represents doesn't represent what I stand for. And it's that simple. Trump doesn't either, but he's already been in office. And at least I know that if Trump's in office, I can express myself in the way that I want. I'll be able to hold on to my guns. And I'll be able to remain independent as an individual who sees myself as more than just my skin complexion. And at the end of the day, regardless of what Barack Obama says or the black community feels or even my mom or my grandmother. The only person's thoughts, beliefs, values who matter ultimately is mine because that's who I am. That's who makes me up as an individual in America, not black America, in America as a whole. And I'm going to stay true to that. I don't give a fuck who like it. I catch you guys on the next dosage over and out.